You are all weirdos. Weird science is the revolution. Weird science is the revolution. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Best Comics of the Week show. That means that I'm here with my man, Gray. What up, Gray? Hey, back by popular demand. Yeah, yeah really. We, or maybe just <laughs> demand. I, I don't even know that. Our demise have been exaggerated. Exactly. We haven't had a show in a couple of weeks uh, because the one week it was that there were no picks. Uh, kind of both weeks, but we that ended up where... That was pretty sad, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. You also had a throat issue at one point, but that kind of was the same deal. There weren't a lot of great books, but we're back. We are back. Uh, me and you both have kind of had a little bit of lull uh, on our channels, mainly because the books haven't been great. Yeah, so we have. it's good to have them. And I ended up talking on the Thinking Critical show that I do with Wes that uh, I need the big books to come. Like, and I'm talking big books, like books that I really like, like the Ghost Machine books or the Transformers, things like that, Conan. I need those to kind of hit more because with that extra week in July, it feels like some of those haven't come out in a real long time. And so it kind of gets me like antsy. I, I like having those like given the books that I know will be good and I, we haven't had that many same it's weird those. it feels like yeah. ages since um, Geiger doesn't it yeah and then Geiger comes out next week I was glad okay, I ended cool. up getting the review copies for Image and I will send them to you after we're done and I went looking through it and I didn't see it at first I'm like really like another week without these then I start worrying that Jeff Johns is delaying things or whatnot. but really my favorite of the Ghost Machine is Rook Exodus Yeah, I really want that and uh, again I also really like Redcoat too so I'm really looking forward to having A lot of the big books coming up that we kind of know that we'll at least have those given for the best of. But we have this week, not a lot of books, not a ton. Again, before we get started, I want to stress to everybody listening that these aren't me and Greg demanding that these are the only good books. We're not saying that these are everybody's favorites. They are our favorites. There are a couple books that I know will probably be on some people's list. Things like maybe Uncanny X-Men almost made my list, but didn't quite make it. And things even like an absolute power. There were a lot of books that almost made it. And there's a bunch of indie stuff that me and you haven't read, things like that. So what I'm saying is, please give us your picks. Even if they're exactly, you know, the picks that we give, give some reasons and stuff in the comments below. But we're going to get going on this because you have lunch coming. It's funny, you have lunch coming and I'm getting, it's getting near midnight here. I'm ready to go to bed. Having a midnight snack, Jim? In maybe? Japan. Yeah, maybe I will. <laughs> I, I Actually, maybe, because I have a bunch of things to edit. I'll be up pretty long. But we're going to start with DC Comics, as we always do. Gray does not have a pick uh, at DC Comics. Actually, I don't know. That that kind of, you know, makes me, it amazes me a, a bit, because you've liked Boy Wonder, I thought, and I actually like this it issue. It didn't quite make Boy it Wonder. for me this time. Yeah, that's crazy. I, I ended up really liking it. It's Boy Wonder number four, written and art by Juni Ba. One big thing about it is it's six dollars. It is a black label book and it's about Damien Wayne. And a lot of people have talked about it, and we have talked about it as well. It feels it doesn't feel like a black label book. And and I'll even give more things. Like it feels like an all ages book. It, and it's not really that much out of continuity. It's actually a good book to give to somebody if you want them to learn about Damien and see yeah. how Damien kind of ticks with, you know, the Robins. And the Robins were pretty good. This one's with Talia. I really liked it. I, I like the weird and complex, you know, relationship of Talia and Damien. I'm a big Damien fan. So I like that. Same in, here, this, in this, I, I think that what it does well is give a little humanity to Talia. A lot of times Talia is played off as just cold, uh, especially towards Damien when Damien died. Spoiler alert, when he died way back in the new 52, uh, Talia even gave, he, she gave herself like five seconds to cry and then was done. But this actually gives her a little more humanity. And at this point, I've not only, I've gone past the point of, boy, this art is weird, to then say, you yeah, know, I'm getting used to it now. I actually really like it. I actually like really it. do good. like it. I wasn't sure about yeah. the way he's drawn Talia. That's the only thing. Like, say, she's good in this, but she looks a bit weird. She looks a bit She off. does look a bit. And what I do like, though, you have a lot of play, almost like a fairy tale type deal. You have things that look like it's, you know, a lithograph book type yeah. deal. And I, I thought that was really, really neat. Goes into a bit of what Damien was supposed to be, you know, a vessel for Rachel Ghoul, things like that. And again, it gives people, if you don't know Damien or you know you know somebody younger who's just getting into comics and you want them to learn about Damien, it's a really good series 
to end up giving people, you know, that base knowledge of Damien because most of the times when he's in the regular books, you get just one thing. Basic bitch, he's a brat, he's a jerk. Hey, he used to be with Talia and and it doesn't really do well for me because I do like Damien and like, you know, the the ins and outs and the complexity of the character, but that is it for DC. But if you if again, I suggest people get it, but maybe wait for trade. It is six dollars an issue, or yeah, if you're it's pricey, kind of isn't interested, it for single yeah, issues. it's very it's very pricey. Uh, maybe even wait, and if you have the app, read it on the app when it's fully on there. It might be a better play. Uh, but we're gonna move to Marvel Comics, and we're gonna start with uh, a pick that me and you both had. You're going to get crazy in a minute, but this pick, <laughs> I'll give the deal. It's Wolverine Deep Cut number two, written by Chris Claremont, art by Edgar Salazar, three ninety nine. Well worth it. I think it's really, really good. And I, this is the thing. I'm not a lifelong, you know, Wolverine or X Men fan, and not Same that I didn't Jim, like yeah. them. I Same. just never read the comics. And when I started reading, I was DC. Got into Marvel a little later, and me and you have talked about it over and over that. We're more DC guys, uh, but the idea of Chris Claremont doing a Wolverine issue that goes back and it's during the Outback deal, it's during the whole, you know, when they were wanted, and it, it's really cool. And and it's cool for me. I didn't read those stories, so I'm we're reading something that takes place in an era that I wasn't reading, and I'm still liking it, and it actually intrigues me to read a little more. Uh, but Edgar Salazar, the art's really good, and it's just Wolverine kicking butt against the Marauders, pretty much in this one, right? I mean, it feels tell me like what a you classic, like about doesn't it? It feels like exactly what, what you said. We've not read in the past. A lot of people have. You know, we're kind of new to this. It says in the synopsis, it's um, never before told mission before Uncanny X Men issue two five one. You know, Jim. So you're talking like years ago, aren't you? Yeah, classic Wolverine. It's just classic art. Yeah, and it's one of the things that I saw some people actually bring up because I didn't know. But it, even some people seem to forget during that era where Wolverine and a couple other X-Men, they had died. And then when they came back, they weren't able to be like caught on cameras. It was It's an odd concept. They they pull that out. You have the Marauders. He's going after Wolverine's going after Sinister, uh, Mr. Sinister, because at the end of the first issue, he was fighting Sabretooth the whole time and realized it was a clone. And that points to Sinister. So he's gone to get that. And really, it's, it's a weird thing because... It is just a lot of fighting, but it, it's pretty good. Yeah, it is. And the one thing that I, I have read a little bit of Claremont stuff, and one of the biggest complaints is, you know, very wordy, over dialogue, that it's not here. It's actually a, a crazy way of Claremont doing something where he's kind of not going back to his old style. It it's, works well. It works well. And I, I suggest it to anybody, whether they are an X-Men or Wolverine fan or not. Obviously, it's coming out while the Deadpool Wolverine movie's coming out, so there's going to be some interest in that. So I, I thought that that was really cool. And Edgar Salazar, because Claremont and Edgar Salazar did the Marjorie Horn Knights deal uh, with Wolverine and with Cap and Black Widow, and the art was good, it, it, but it's getting better and better. I really, really like it. And like you said, when you look at it, it looks classic. Me too. I love it. I thought it was awesome. And it's great seeing the Marauders in this because I don't know, you know that much about them as a, as a kind of evil team, you know, killing mutants, weren't they? Yeah. And you see a bunch of characters that, you know, I know like Grey Crow and, and things like yeah. that. Yeah. I just and know some cool names. Them. Yeah. And it's cool. There's some, again, oh. I didn't know all the Marauders in this book. It kind of was, but I never felt lost. Like even the things that I didn't know, is Claremont either is good at, you know, kind of explaining it really quick or making it so you realize you don't really have to know. I don't need the background of every no, character or whatever here. because he's there just to get sinister. And the Marauders, when they talk and, and the dialogue between each of them does really spell out the idea of what that team is and the whole mutant massacre that happened and, and stuff like that. So I thought it was really Really Jimmy, well it was you, done. by the way. It was you that got me to read issue one. Your positive review of that, you know, got me into this. So, yeah. There we go. Look at you being positive. I, I know. I was gonna. Re- <laughs> I was going to review this, too. And, again, I, I just – I don't know. And it's kind of like the, the channel has taken a little dive of, you know, some people being hyped because I haven't done a lot of uh, videos or books. I don't know why. I was getting all geared up. For San Diego Comic Con, and then when that came out, it's like I, I got burned out. It's a summer slump, Jim. Don't worry, yeah, it, it happens is. every it year. It always is, and and also I'm yeah. I'm off doing dirty songs. I end, <laughs> I end up doing that. Speaking of which, I didn't even tell you before we started. One of my songs got demonetized, 
and it, it, it's devastated me. It's one oh, of the big no. ones. I was so upset. I was so upset. But we're going to move on to the second pick. We have two picks from Marvel. This is 100% your pick. I let you go in the first issue of this, but I actually am setting you up because this issue kind of is, it's not, I don't even know. It's not great, but it, it's crazy. And I it's think crazy it's a enough to work. Choice. I think it's, yeah, what do you reckon? This, this might upset a few people, but I am having a blast. It's bonkers. What is it? It's Spider-Man Reign 2, issue 2 by Carrie Andrews. I don't know what it is about it, Jim. It's just, for me, it's fun. And I love the art style, this kind of the classic really good. McFarlane, you know, style by Carrie Andrews. He, he nails it. But the story's all over the place, but it's just a blast. What, it what is all say? over the place. What it is all over the place. And what I kind of think of it, it really plays off. And I didn't like the Joe Kelly nonstop Spider-Man. No. Some people did. I didn't like it. And then you had that savage fight. That was even worse. But the nonstop, the idea of, Man, things are just happening, and it's always going for. It, it didn't do it for me in that. This book has that. Like it, you don't get a breather. You this don't, book you fly just flies it, around. You? I mean, yeah. I'm telling you, it's like one scene to the next, and there is no downtime. And the art, very detailed, very good. I even am used to uh, Peter, his old man beard, the Santa Claus beard, kind of looks cool. Yeah, and it, he, it like whips around all over the place, People say right? like it doesn't feel like Peter, it's a different character. That's the whole point. It's a kind of an Elseworlds thing, isn't it? You know, it's like Old Man Logan. It's that kind of thing. That's what, that's what I don't understand. I even had people talking today about, say, the absolute DC that's coming out. And they're like, oh, well, yeah. I don't like it because it's not the same as everything we get. I'm like, but that's the point. And, and this, again, that's the point of this. It is wacky. And you end up in the issue, they go back in time. Yeah, you know, they do. Black Cat and Peter, and they're trying to, you know, go after villains. But I'm telling you, it's like boom, boom, boom down the line, and then you get a big shocker at the I'm end. I'm not going to spoil it, Joe. I spoil no, the I don't want to spoil it. Either. Either. This is my favorite line in the book. It says, "What's this? A shriveled up raisin swinging around in dead man's clothes?" <laughs> I just love that line. That's, That's pretty cracking. good. That's pretty good. I thought they were talking about me. Yeah, me too. But yeah, again, <laughs> you, you end up where it's really, really, the art's really well done. It's four ninety nine, but that's not that bad for how much you get. It, it is yeah. really quick, but it's also a book I had to read twice because it is wacky. I did, yeah. I enjoyed it more a second time. Yeah, and it, it's pretty crazy, but I, it probably wouldn't have made my, well, it didn't. I, you sent me the deal. It's getting better, though. It's almost there in a, a here's the deal. It's there as a spectacle. It's yeah, more of exactly. like, a, you know, oh, my God, look at this. Then something like, oh, I'm going to remember the say, story. What, the mainstream critics, in quotation marks, they don't like it, do they? It's yeah. very, very like low score on yeah. um, CBR. Yeah. Boy, yeah, but then again, they see, all of a sudden they're giving like 10 out of 10 to that Blue Beetle book. Thank garbage for that. <laughs> uh, speaking of which, but that, that's it for the big two. So we only had three books for the big two. We're going to go off to India and again. Not a lot of picks this week. I no. almost had a couple I'll just mention because these two indie picks are yours. I almost had Space Ghost that almost made the list. And I, I forget the oh uh, the uh, Kosher Mafia. That probably would have made the list. I didn't finish it. And we were starting and I, I ended up, I was taking too long anyway. So uh, that might oh, be that's an shame. asterisk. Sorry about that. No, that's, that's not your fault. I should have read it. I mean, it's Saturday night, almost at midnight. I have plenty of time to read it by now. But I I had actually read it a couple weeks ago. I got an early review copy. When I read something a couple weeks ago, it's out of sight, out of mind. I can't remember anything. I was going to reread it, but I do. I did like it. I, I'm going to just put it as an honorary mention because I can't really talk too much about it. That's the problem. I don't remember it tit for tat. But we'll go to your picks. Uh, one is it, I keep forgetting about it, and I still haven't read it. And me and you both love Mark Miller. Yeah, we we really we like him. I saw I saw that he thanked you for the review on this. And speaking of which, go to Grace Channel, the Wakazashi TLs. It'll be in the show notes. And you ended up where I saw Mark Miller. Thank you for your review. It's just really know, cool. Mention nice. you on a live stream. He posted point, a tweet. So. It got it got a thousands of views, and then um, the video got like sixty five. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> see, there you that go. sums up my channel. Yeah, at the moment, it, I had one at one point. I actually had a tweet <laughs> for a review for the site. And the tweet ended up getting, I'm telling you, like 22,000 views. And I, But then I go to the site. I'm like, oh, that equaled out to three people showing up. To, That's to, it. Three. Yeah, it's exactly. so weird. It's so weird that people end up. It, it's just it stinks. But 
in that you go into what we're talking about. Okay, it is a Prodigy, Slaves of Mars, issue one. It's a miniseries by Mark Miller. This time we've got art by Stefano Landini, published by Dark Horse Comics now. Um, four ninety nine, Jim, so it's a little bit pricier, but he's been doing that, I've noticed, with his um, issue ones, Mark Miller, and especially with Dark Horse. He's you know, put the price up a dollar. He usually does that when it's the final issue and it's like a double issue, but yeah, yeah, I don't yeah, know, what, yeah. you know what people will think about that. What do you think? I, I I think that people probably uh will deal with it because it's pretty consistently good. Yeah. I mean it does suck. It'd be nice. I mean it'd be nice it'd to be go nice like three ninety nine. two ninety nine would be oh, really God, yeah. nice. Yeah. But again, you know, Dark Horse has to make some money. And he is kind of doing some of these things that seems to kind of keep some of these companies going. So maybe the extra money even goes to them. I'm I'm not sure. Well, he, has a he, lot do, of money. he doesn't get any. Um, he doesn't take any pay. You know, he gives a lot. Yeah, to that's the what artists I'm saying. He has a lot of because like, he has artists, a lot of money. Yeah, so yeah. that's pretty cool. He doesn't and, have to worry about it. And uh, again, the one thing that got me this week. First off, I haven't read Prodigy. I've never. I'm doing a a uh, Patreon show, the Miller stuff on you, our oh, Patreon, right. doing it with my man Mark Claire, and we're going through it. And there's a lot of it that I haven't read. Prodigy is something that I'm not. I haven't read Same any. Yeah. So when it came out and I saw Prodigy, I didn't even recognize it as a, a Miller book, which if I did, I would have read it right away. Uh, but I even saw some people like questioning some of the things about it. And I was like, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm glad yeah. I didn't touch it. The first I, I heard of Prodigy, Jim, was in Big Game, you know, like from last year. That's the first I saw the character. And that's all I knew of him. But it is new reader friendly, this. You do get, you know, a bit of a background of who he is when he was young. You go back in time a little bit and then present day and I, th- I thought it was good it's um it's not too you know like what is going on you're not lost when you're reading it and what i loved about it the most was he he's given a supposedly almost perfect character you know this guy is great at everything he's given really big stakes to this character you know he puts him in this crazy situation where you're like how is he going to get out of this there we That's go That's pretty cool yeah I, i'm gonna check it out i i keep forgetting about it and then i i will probably check it out when we're done here when i'm done editing stuff at 4 a.m but I'll Ooh. check that out. But we have one last pick, and it's it's your pick. It's another indie pick. It is, and this is right in the background, just to give people, if you can hear it, it's the 12 o'clock chimes playing, Jim. It's look, <laughs> what is going on? Okay, this is Japan in the small town. Okay, we're talking, um, it's a new indie release. It's a new version of EC Comics. It's released by Oni Press, yeah? It's called Cruel Universe, issue one, anthology book with four stories. I'll just give you the quickly. The writers are Karina Becko. Chris Condon, Matt Kint, and Ben H. Winters. There we go. Four kind of like classic sci-fi stories, a little bit sci-fi or space fantasy. And the first one by Matt Kint is an absolute classic. I love Matt Kint. I was actually going to ask because uh, Matt Kint's one of my favorite writers. And it's one of those where, again, I didn't even know about this. So I'm I'm definitely... Definitely going to check it out. Now, I, I here's the thing. Again, I also kind of remember. I think I got a review copy when I saw this. I think maybe they have to, you know, spell it out a little better. I, I yeah. don't know because it's I not don't that clear, think just, is it? It's like EC, the classic if it version. Was EC, cl- if it was EC Universe, cool universe. Like maybe that would have done something. I'm like, oh, the EC stuff, but it's. I guess that's kind of tough. to say four ninety nine. By the way, so not not too bad if, considering it's you know four different stories. Yeah, they're only short stories, but it is forty pages totally. And as I say, um, um, the, the art's very good throughout, but the first story, you've got to read it, Jim. Really, it's isn't that good? I, yeah. I really like Matt Kent a lot. Uh, and I look, there's actually a decent amount of reviews for it, and that's good yeah. scores, actually. You have a couple very tens. Uh, I'm looking to see if Sus Gabe did not review it. No, that surprised me. I was looking for Gabe's review. This seems like something that would be up Gabe's alley then. And, and seriously, now that I see it, while I didn't end up realizing and they even have it's funny because of the whole you know site and whatever but it even has kind of that weird science kind of side it just says science on it but you it have uh the cover is awesome i mean i looked at that cover so if i was actually at the store you know the comic shop and saw it that might have catch my eye but just seeing cruel universe number one i don't know they they should have done a little bit more with that title to get people at least they know a little more of what yeah. it is. It's a nice cover, isn't it? But like you say, you're not really sure what this is just by the title, you know, it doesn't really like pop out. And you have you. that science, I mean maybe have the whole weird science deal on it because that's kind of a, a cool deal. I mean maybe they were afraid to do it too. in case you went yeah, after they were them, mad you know that, I mean? they were mad that I was gonna get <laughs> mad at using something else that was more it's weird. It was more of the movie, but also work with the comic and then all that stuff. And really we we pulled that out of our butt. 
uh, like one day right before we ended up having a website. <laughs> really? So it was actually because I did it with my man, Eric. It was just Jim and Eric's comic book blog. It was for a day. And then Eric's like, that's the worst name ever. And then we were like, well, what do we, what do you, what do we just know and like? And we, we had been talking about weird science at work the day before. So we picked it and it kind of worked out. So it is a, a cool deal. But yeah, I'm looking at it. I'm going to have to check it out. So the like Mackin story, as I say, is a cracker. There's also Chris Condon, who's famous for that Texas blood and the, um, Oh my God! What was that gang? The the something gang, the, the Enfield the gang massacre. That's it. Yeah, he I did really that as like well. that. So if yeah. you like him, you might enjoy his story. Yeah, too. yeah, and uh, yeah, and I think that he's going to be doing the Green Arrow stuff at uh, DC. So that's kind of a cool. I'm thing looking forward if, if to that, by the way. I yeah. am too. And if you're looking, if you haven't read either that, that Texas Blood or the Enfield gang massacre, it's kind of a cool play to check it out. And uh, again, I suggest reading those too. And I really. I really like them feel gang massacre and I'm not a Western fan. Uh, Same here. Not yeah. at all. So yeah, I really did like that, but that's it. That is it for the picks of the week. Getting back into the swing of things. Uh, if you are paying attention on the channel, I'm going to do an anticipated show. I haven't done that. It's weird when we don't do the best of it really like throws me for a loop. So then I don't do the anticipated show either for some so reason. For I, I, loop, I know. Yeah, it does. And I, I don't <laughs> I don't know why that happens or why it is, but it, it is. And now we're doing this. So, yeah, we didn't ditch it. People, I got more questions again. I actually got questions of if we ditched our Grant Morrison podcast, me and you do, and this. And I'm like, no, we didn't ditch it. No ditching allowed. But that is it. You're going to go off to eat lunch in Japan. I might have a midnight snack. And start to edit But please everybody like we said Put your picks in the comments below And also I will say If if something like that Cruel Universe If you hadn't gotten it And then you went out and got it And you really liked it Let us know that too Because I know yeah, Ray to hear that, would yeah. really love to hear if, if you picked up something And uh, we have a bunch of people A bunch of people have told me before That you know if we do suggest something That they didn't know of Or uh, haven't read They'll go and check it out And then they let me know and luckily, cross our fingers, we haven't had many people yell at us. I'm not going to say that the Spider-Man rain, you have to run and get that. But that's a weird one. It's a weird one to suggest. It only because weird, it's very I'm personal. weird, Jeff. I can't help it. it I'm is, I'm though, it's one of those, and I, I'll tell you, even the boy wonder from before, I almost hesitate to say to somebody, you have to get it because the art is so odd you know what it's i mean quite it's quite so I've, I've heard people yeah. like writing it off saying it's terrible but i, I like it i like, I like his it. style it's yeah unique. i like it yeah and and again it, it's there's not a lot more things subjective like art you know art music stuff like that is very subjective and like i really do like just want to shout out i, I like peach from moco i'm just gonna say the, yeah the ultimate x-men, X-Men. and that's ultimate what it kind of reminds yeah. me this this thing reminds me of that it's not the same type of art but it reminds me of it being so different from what we usually get, but sometimes that's cool, you know, that you get something a little different and whatnot. So uh, let us know. Let us Absolutely. know all the things that you uh, guys read and what you liked. And, and if you do suggest something that I haven't read or Greg, we do go and check it out for the most part if we have time. So with all that, though, thank you for joining me, Gray. As always, check out his channel. It'll be in the, the uh, description. It's the Wakazashi's Tea House. So check that out and Cheers, check Jim. out his Prodigy deal. And that'll be that, and we'll talk to you all later. You are all weirdos. Weird science is the revolution. Weird science is the revolution.